Welcome learner. This time we are going to discuss something about the temple sculpture. As we have already discussed that Indian sculpture mostly was related to temples. It is one of the means to ornament the temples and also to give some religious education to the uh, devotees and the worshippers. For this reason, most of the temples of India are nicely decorated. Now, before we come to discuss sculpture, let us know something about the sculpture. Sculpture are generally divided into three groups. One is sculpture in the round, second high relief or bus relief sculpture and third one is relief sculpture. Sculpture in the round that is freestanding that means you can watch that piece of work going around the sculpture. So suppose this is a sculpture piece. And if you want to watch it, you just go around and you can see every part of the sculpture, back, side, front and everything. So this is actually to be very close with the sculpture itself. Second one is bus relief or high relief. In this case, the sculptures are protruding much from the surface of the wall. That means they are almost out of the wall except it is clinging some part in the back side with the wall. In fact, most of the Indian temple sculptures are bas relief in character. They are clinging to the wall as you can see here a famous work that is from Elephanta Trimurti. This is carved out of the cave wall and it is coming out a lot from that. So we call it relief sculpture or bas relief. The another kind of sculpture that is actually not much protruding from the surface, just they are partly relieved from that. You can see here one such. This is a low relief sculpture. It is not protruding much from the surface. So we have seen three types of sculpture that is used in Indian temples. Now, first thing that we are going to discuss of the style that are used in Nagara temples. Odisha will be the best example for that. The Sura Sundari. This is a well-known sculpture of Konarak temple. This is uniquely a in the round sculpture on the top of the temple that means almost near the Kalasa or Amalaka. There are so many such sculptures on this space all around that Shikhara. These are the heavenly or celestial musicians. They are playing different kind of musical instrument. Here we see a divine Apsara or Surasundari. She is playing a drum. Notice the use of the stone here. Remember, Orishan stones are very fragile or they have lot of iron in that and the sea is very close to it. So the saline water and in the same time the air also containing lot of saline in them 
and that's the reason you will see the pores all over the stone. Odisan sculptures, especially female figures, are very voluminous. They are heavy and squat, but never lost the rhythm of the figure. The faces are almost stereotyped in all cases. They are not much expression in the face, but they are pleasant and smiling. All the faces are equally have same kind of expression. The drum, you can see that she is playing with, and the, with the rhythm of the drum. Her figure also tilting and very nicely in this particular sculpture. Then we will come to another sculpture from Khajuraho, that is Central India, that is the work of the Chandela's dynasty. Khajuraho is famous for its sculptures, particularly the Kandaria Mahadeva temple that I have discussed. It is the style which is called Beshara. The high plinth and the outer wall or the jangha as we can call it also of this particular architecture is heavily loaded with sculptural beauty. There are different kind of themes that have been used by the sculptors of Khajuraho. There are secular themes, means the everyday life of the common people. There are royal themes, there are the themes around the court of the kings, and different kind of gods and goddesses. And most famous Khajuraho is for its erotic sculptures. In any case, so the sculptural style is extremely beautiful and in the same time the rhythm of the carving is also amazing. Here is such an example you can see. See the, how the artist has used the rhythm of the figure like a creeper as if it is not a human being but a creeper is gradually growing towards the upside. And you can see in the same time that artists had taken a lot of artist freedom. If we want to judge it in terms of western uh, the physiological nature, then it would be, uh, seem to be very wrong. But artists didn't care. His utmost aim is just quiz out the beauty of the female figure, not the representation of the realistic appearance of the female figure. So here we will see that how they have abstracted, how they have geometrically formed the human figure in this case. Again we will see one of the very famous sculpture from Rastakuta period. Elephanta, just few kilometers away from the mainland of Mumbai, a very small island. There are few caves. In that caves, you will find so many sculptures, almost like that of Elora or Ajanta. Rastakutas, they are great lover of art and architecture. And here you see being Shaiva, I mean Shaivatic by religion, they dedicated almost all the temples and art to Shiva. Elephanta is very famous for Shaivatic art. Here also you see a very beautiful sculpture that is called Kalyana Sundara Murti. That is a scene of the marriage of uh, Shiva with Parvati. Nonetheless, one of the most famous sculptures of Elephanta is Trimurti or Mahesh. We have seen Indian sculptor have 
exploited female beauty more aesthetically and in the same time quite attractively if not sexually. But their many works are completely related to philosophical exploitation. Indian philosophy is expressed through many of its sculptures and one of them is Mahesha or Trimurti. In our mythology it is said God have three functions creation, protection and destruction. Sristi, Sthiti and Loy. Creation is the one of the first aspects of human life and God Brahma is supposed to be the functional personality for Srishti. The second is protection. To create is not enough. Mother gives birth to the child and after that she takes care of that. Bringing the child up is one of the most important duty of mother. In the same way, Brahma's creation is not enough to protect it is very important. This job is given to Vishnu who takes care of the humanity and the world and everything. He protects everything from all kind of disasters. The third is lay destruction. Why we need destruction? Unwanted evil bad omens are to be destroyed to give new way of life. So time to time it is very important to eliminate all those elements and that is the job of Shiva. In his Tandava Nurtya, which we will discuss later, how he actually trampled the evil under his foot and gave protection to the believers and devotees. So appears the Trimurti. Notice there is three faces. The first face is calm and quiet. That is the other face is Aghora. That means anger, Rodra Ras. That means the appearance of destruction. And this one is feminine that gives birth to the new generation. So the middle one is calm and quiet with sthiti or srishti. Second one is caring and third one is the destruction. So Trimurti and Mahesha is a very symbolic kind of work of art that we see here. After that we come to another very beautiful work that we see in Ilura. In Ilura we have different kind of themes taken from epics, Ramayana, Mahabharata, then Bhagavad Puran, etc., etc. Here you see one beautiful work, Sita Haran, Abduction of Sita. The unusual composition of this relief work is very interesting. The diagonal figure of the Ravana who is fighting Jatayu and the chariot in one of the corners of the composition where Sita is watching 
the combat between Jatayu and Ravana. This kind of composition is unacademic. In Western countries, Tulo Lothrek and Dega had tried it and faced a lot of criticism for their unusual composition. They belong to the 19th century and this sculpture was done in the 8th century CE. So just imagine that how modern those sculptors were and they defied the usual norms of composition and dared to make such beautiful and unique composition here. Another beautiful composition of Elora, which is famous for many, many such sculptures is Mahishasura Martini. Durga, we all know the story that Devi Durga was created by all the gods by contributing their power and their weapons to kill the buffalo demon who was massacring the world. The sculpture Mahishasura Mardini of Elora in Kailasnath temple is one of the most beautiful works. The 18th century sculpture is on the wall of the temple. The Devi Durga who was contributed with all the powers and weapons by many many gods to kill the demon buffalo. The image of Durga is sitting on the lion and with her all force is killing the buffalo demon. See the composition. The buffalo is in the right side of the composition, is trying to resist Devi Durga's violent attack and in the same time the lion is also helping Devi Durga. The composition of full of movement which is very unusual in the 18th century sculpture and every movement of the arms, ten arms of Durga, then the frightened uh, inclined figure of the Asura is also equally amazing. So you can see in the 8th century how Indian sculptors could reach such a perfect maturity in this work of art. While all this happening in the central India or in the western India, the Pallavas in the south were creating all these artworks. The Pancharat, which already we have discussed. Sir, temple na Oh, bol bol na. Ita ita temple na. Ah, Ah, oh, pancha, ha. The Pallava kings were creating some models for their future temples in the shape of Pancharatha in Mahabalipuram. Just few kilometers from this site, there is a temple-like structure which they call Mandapa. There is no actual inner temple as such, there is no Biman, only the Mandapa. The three walls of the Mandapa because it is open on the front side totally. In one side, the left side of the Mandapa, there is the beautiful uh, sculpture that we will discuss already, already. And again in the middle of the Mandapa and the Pancharatha, there is a huge boulder. And this boulder is beautifully curved with low relief sculptures. 
You can see here. Now, the scholars have different opinion about the identification of the theme. There are some opinion that it is actually Ganga Bhattarana and others think it is Arjuna's penance. Now I will ask you learner to judge whether it is uh, Ganga Bhattarana or it is Arjuna's penance. Before that I give you some as part of the stories. For Arjuna's penance most probably you know in Mahabharat when they were in the jungle in exile, Arjuna was uh, asked by Dharmara Yudhishthi to find some weapon. For this reason, he ventured alone in the jungle to find the weapons and started meditating to get the Pashupat weapon, a dangerous missile of Shiva. And in the course of his meditation, all in a sudden, a kirat or a hunter appeared and in the same time, Arjun and the hunter threw arrows to kill a boar. And the boar was dead with two arrows on it. Kirat, they are also, he is also actually demanding that it is his prey. At the same time, Arjuna also claiming that it is his own arrow that killed the boar. Though the, they started fighting, but when Arjuna threw his arrows, it turned into a garland and falling on the feet of the Kirat or the hunter. Then Arjuna realized that is not actually a Kirat but Shiva himself. And so Shiva was pleased with Arjuna and gave the boon of the Pashupat weapon. This is the story. Now the reason to identify it as Kirat Arjuna, they are a figure in a meditating pose. You can see a sadhu like figure is uh, meditating in a yogic posture and just few uh, steps th th that side there is another figure is uh, in the form of a hunter. So that is the reason for the figure of the saint or the sadhu and the kira the hunter it is recognized as Arjuna's penance. The other story that when Bhagirath brought down Ganga from the Jata of Shiva to give life to his ancestors is known as Ganga Vataran or the descent of Ganges. Here a fissure through which water flows and there are some uh, figures which are identified as Bhagirath. In any case, just composition is crowded with so many figures. The typical elongated forms of the figures that were speciality of the Pallava style and the movement of figures and the other animals. This is an interesting, lot of animals figures are used in this particular figure. Fish, elephant, deer, snakes, uh, and all these animals are here. So this is the beautiful composition of from the Pallava period. After that we come to one of the most intricate carving in Indian sculptures are from Haisala, 11th century near Karnatak. The Haisala kings they built many temples of Vishnu or Krishna. The Someswara temple is very famous for that. Haisalas, they use a kind of stone. When it is quarried, it is very soft, but it gradually 
becomes hard. So when it is soft, it is very easy to carve intricate designs. The Karnataka area is also famous for ivories in those days. And there are a lot of craftsmen who is a master in carving ivories. The intricate or subtle incision on ivories had been transferred on the soft stone of Karnataka during Haisala period. And this experience of carving ivory they used for carving the stone. So you see, the see intricate carving. Every bead, every hairline so minutely carved by these sculptors. This is an image of dancing Saraswati. The beautiful design all around, the carving of the jewelries, the tassels, everything is wonderfully uh, exercised by these sculptors. But scholars believe this is the beginning of decadence of Indian sculpture. The sculpture uh, belonged to Halabid temple in Haisala period. The designs and intricate carvings are the reason for which scholars believe it is a decadent period of Indian art. Why? When artist starts the aesthetic quality, they prone to be more and more ornamental. According to scholar, Haisala art is the beginning of the decadence of Indian art because the artists try to cover their aesthetic quality by adding a lot of ornamentation and decoration. The overcrowded designing and use of all these decorative qualities actually covered the human body's special kind of aesthetic expression. In contrast to Gupta age, just remember the famous sculpture of Sharnath Buddha. Without any ornamentation, it expresses the spiritual quality. But when it is covered with so much jewelry and ornamentation, you lost that sense of spirituality. In any case, Indian temple sculpture went through a long history. From the time of the Guptas, the Aihol temple sculpture, to gradually moving towards the Ganga dynasty of Orissa, then the Chandela dynasty of central India, and after that Rastakuta. And in this side, Pallavas, Cholas, and Haisalas, they excel in the beauty of ancient Indian sculptures. So, learner, we have seen that most of the sculptures of ancient India are related to the temples. Either they are simply used as a decorative quality or they are used as expression of spirituality. So I hope you have enjoyed this lesson of temple architecture and art and it will further help you to learn more. Thank you.